Well, Rai Jarar is an Iraqi-American political analyst who's done lots of work in the region. Uh, he also writes for a number of different publications, and I want to go ahead and bring him in for more on that. Uh, I have to start. A few weeks ago, we saw Nadia Murad, a Nobel laureate, at the White House asking Donald Trump for help. And he asked her about her Nobel Prize. Uh, let's have a listen. They gave it to you for what reason? We can explain. For what reason? For that after all this happened to me, I didn't give up. For, for many people, this was cringingly awkward, this survivor of rape and everything, asking Donald Trump for help and being asked about her Nobel Prize instead. With a president like Donald Trump in the White House, what sort of help do you think the Yazidi can expect, at least from the U.S. in this moment? That's a good question. And I think uh, Ms. Murad uh, articulated the uh, disaster that happened for the Yazidi community and for Iraqis uh, at large. Uh, and she also explained how the story didn't have a happy ending. Uh, Yazidis are still under attack. Uh, they were not able to go back home because the conditions on the ground have not changed. So there is a lot to ask from the U.S. government. The U.S. government has contributed to destabilizing Iraq, has contributed to the conditions that created ISIS, and unfortunately, they're still contributing to the conditions that remain today uh, that are preventing Yazidis and other Iraqis from going back home. Murad, uh Murad was speaking in Germany. Uh, we know that a large organized Yazidi council there. Uh, she's urging the Yazidis to return home to Sinjar. So how realistic is that? I think it, it's, it's a, a question of the um, conditions in Iraq improving. Uh, Ms. Murad mentioned that uh, Kurdish militias, uh, Shiite militias, even Iraqi government uh, forces still fight around Sinjar uh, to control more territory. Uh, so it's not a stable situation there. So it's, it's, more, it's a question of convincing the Iraqi authorities uh, to create a safe space uh, to invite these people to go back home, but also to create the conditions for them to leave uh, wherever they're here. Uh, like some of them are in the US, some of them are in Europe. Uh, so also creating the right conditions for their departure. It's a very complicated situation at, the, at, at this moment, because I don't think uh, Yazidis or other Iraqis have many reasons to leave the safe countries that they're in now, and they don't have many reasons to go back uh, to a place where they once called home. Iraq has offered some of them a one-off payment of about $1,700, which is three times the average wage, uh, the monthly wage there in Iraq. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's considered enough, but what more practically could the Iraqi government do? I think some of, some of the questions have to do with uh, very, very large items that have to be dealt with. We're talking about sectarian divisions, uh, militias roaming around streets, fights between political parties to control territory in Iraq. These, these are things that are not only uh, related to the Yazidi situation. It's related to the entirety of the displacement crisis in Iraq, where millions of Iraqis continue to be displaced. I think when it, when it comes down to the tactical level, uh, what the Iraqi government can provide is immediately securing these villages that were inhabited by Yazidis, uh, withdrawing Iraqi uh, militias, uh, Kurdish, Shiite, or central government militias from there, uh, and providing uh, these Yazidis with either microloans or um, substantial amounts of money to rebuild their homes and their cities that were destroyed. So, so there is a lot more than $1,700 to uh, make uh, entire communities relocate back to Iraq. And many of them we know are facing difficulties, including those that have children who are unable to bring them back to their community. Right, Gerard, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.